We've come to a dreaded lesson. Dreaded? How could this be anything but fun, right? Well, turns out that, uh, or at least rumor has it, a lot of people don't like algebra. Well, this is going to be a little different because what I'm going to do in a future lesson is show you how there are some kind of red flags to guide us on our ability to do simplification of Boolean algebraic expressions. But before we do that, what I want to do is just show you a quick example of how Boolean expressions, well, you can manipulate them, move them around, change them around so that we can have two expressions that are exactly the same thing. Well, not exactly the same thing because their performance may be a little bit different, but the output, the result, is going to be the same thing. So let's do one real quick. How about x? is equal to a or uh, a bar b. All right. Now, real simple expression. Um, just heck, how many gates do we've got? Do we have? Well, we have an inverter that a passes through. We have an and gate that a and b will be passing through, and then we have an or gate that that both of that all of them uh, get combined for the output x. Let's do the truth table, and I'll just, I'm just going to start out with a quick, we'll just do a little truth table. I mean, it's just four rows, right? So we have A, B, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. There we go. Now, if you were to look at this as a mathematical expression, what's the first thing that you'd do? Well, first thing I'd do is the ands, right? So I've got to do this and, but before I can do that and, I have to actually take the inverse of B, I mean, excuse me, the inverse of A. So, take a, a bar, and that means that this column right here, I'm going to take everywhere that a is a 0, I'm going to flip it to a 1. Everywhere a is a 1, I'm going to flip it to a 0. All right. All right, that was pretty simple. Now I've got a bar, and I've got b. This column right here is b. So now I can do the column for a bar anded with b. What does that look like? Well, it's going to be the and of this B column with this A bar column. So 0 and 1. Remember, they both have to be a 1 to output a 1. So we have 0 and 1 is 0. 1 and 1 is 1. 0 and 0 is 0. 1 and 0 is 0. So, if I were to look at the output where that gate comes from, you know, the output of that gate, this is the pattern of ones and zeros I'd see based on the different inputs that could come into the circuit. Now, the last step is to take the or, or A, with A bar anded with B. So I've got this column, A bar ended with B, and I'm going to OR it with the first column of A. Now remember, the OR said if any of my inputs are a 1, I'm outputting a 1. So 0 or 0, no 1's there, so that outputs a 0. 0 or 1, 1. 1 or 0, 1. 1 or 0, 1. All right. Does that look oddly familiar? Well, kind of looks like just an OR gate, doesn't it? I mean, if you look at, in fact, let's go ahead and do a column for this. A or B. All right. Now, 0 or 0, that's 0. 0 or 1, that's 1. 1 or 0, that's 1. 1 or 1, that's 1. Yeah. Looks like this column is equal to this column. And we've seen right now a serious, well, uh, benefit maybe is the word I'm looking for, of Boolean algebraic expressions versus mathematical algebraic expressions. To prove something is true in algebra, I don't know if you remember these things, but there were line by line by line by line by line proofs that we had to make, right? The, you know, this is true. If this is true, then this is true. If this is true, then this is true. <laughs> All you need for Boolean algebra is a truth table. All I need to prove that this guy just so happens to equal A or B, that's true. Why do I know? Well, I've shown you that for every possible case, it's true. Every possible case, 
A or A bar B is equal to A or B. What does that mean for us? Well, what that means is that I can manipulate these, just, just because I got an algebraic expression, a Boolean algebraic expression in a certain format, doesn't mean that I can't change it, manipulate it, move it around a little bit to make something better, okay? Better, what makes it better? Well, let's do these circuits, all right? So I've got A, B, those are my signals into this circuit. So if I'm coming left to right, going through these expressions, let's do the just do the a or a bar b first. The very first thing we did was we computed what a bar is equal to, right? So right at this point, I've got a bar. Now once I had a bar, I could and it with b. So I'm anding it with b. So at this point in this and gate, I've got a bar anded with b. And then the last step was to OR A with the output A bar and B. So I'm going to create an OR gate here. And that's going to take this value of A all the way over. There you go. This is the circuit for that expression. What's the circuit for this expression, A or B? Well, it's just an OR gate. All right. Now, let's take a look at, well, the differences between these two circuits. First of all, this gate, the, the bottom one, the A or B, there's just one single gate. For the top one, there's one, two, three gates. Now, granted, one's a, a, an inverter, and that's going to be a pretty quick gate, but still, you've got two two input gates and one one input gate. So there are one, two, three, four, five inputs into different logic gates and one, two, three outputs for these logic gates. Pretty complex circuit. Now, we're going to talk about three things in particular. First of all, which circuit do you think is faster? Well, every single gate I pass through incurs a little bit of a delay. And so I've got a very small delay with this inverter, but then I've got two slightly more significant delays with those two, the AND gate and the OR gate. So I really have kind of three stages that, that signals that any change in the signal for it to propagate all the way, if A changes, it has to propagate through the inverter, the AND, and the OR gate before we can be sure that X is correct, all right? How many stages or levels of delay do we have to pass through here? Well, just one OR gate. So the bottom circuit, this one is faster, All right? Second, every gate requires power to run. It, it, has, it takes some energy, which usually that energy, it, unless it emits itself as light, it's going to emit itself as heat. It's going to burn off as heat. So which one generates more heat. Which one uses more power? Well, this one's got more gates, so this one's going to run with, this is going to require more power to operate. This one is going to require less power. So the OR gate wins again in less power. All right. All right. What about the next one? So it's faster, it's less power. And by the way, this also translates to our code. If you had done a conditional statement, an if statement that said if A is equal to one or if A is not equal to one and B is equal to one, that would have taken more time to process than just is A a one or is B a one. You know, your code is actually gonna run faster too. One last thing. These guys are made up of transistors. Transistors take up space on our silicon, the, the, on the, the actual chip or the, the circuit board. Which one is going to require more transistors? Well, since the OR gate is included in both of these circuits, but the top circuit actually adds an inverter and an AND gate, top circuit is going to take more physical space on our, process, on our board. So more physical space. Oop, didn't do that quite right, did I? I know some of you are sitting back there watching me do that and screaming, Tarn off, you, uh, you, uh, you screwed that up. Let's try that again. Less 
physical space. And in fact, the less physical space has another very closely related item. Once again, this top one takes more transistors, bottom one takes fewer transistors. That means it also costs less. All right. And that didn't really show up on the camera, but you get the idea. So it costs less. So in every way you look at it, this bottom circuit is better than the top circuit. How did we know that the top circuit and the bottom circuit are kind of interchangeable? There's our truth table.